The story of Edward Henry Harriman, financier and railroad magnate, born in Hempstead, Long Island, February 20th, 1848, the son of an Episcopal minister. His first job was as messenger boy for the brokerage house of D.C. Hayes. He rose rapidly and soon became managing clerk. Then, when only 22 years of age, he borrowed $3,000 from an uncle, bought a seat on the New York Stock Exchange, and went into business for himself. Though he prospered, it was not until after his marriage in 1879 to Mary, the daughter of William A. Averell, a leading upstate banker and president of the Ogdensburg and Lake Champlain Railroad Company, that he found his real life's work and started that amazing career which won for him the title of The Wizard of the Railroad. I pronounce that he be man and wife together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.
shrewd move, Harriman was able later to buy a controlling interest in the road at a fair price instead of the inflated value put upon it by the stockholders. Other successful railroad ventures followed. Then, in 1897, he became interested in the Union Pacific. Badly financed, poorly built, inefficiently operated, the road in railroad circles was contemptuously spoken of as two streaks of rust across the prairies. The rolling stock was dilapidated. The road beds and bridges were in a deplorable condition. Go in, Jack. Well, you the summit. Well, I, I'm giving her all I can. That's the boy. This is a pretty stiff climb. Don't I know it? Oh, there's the light on the station. All right, Jack, it needs up now. Okay, Jack, climb up and get us some water. Okay. It's 12 and 47 minutes late. Why don't you tell me something I don't know? Can't you think of some time going down there? Why don't you run off? I'm one of them fast cans. Of course not. You didn't just give me some of them. You didn't just give me some of them. Let him think. How can I make time on this rotten road bar? Well, I know. Well, do the best you can. Well, go. Well, go. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. was the condition of the Union Pacific when Harriman got control of the line. He immediately inaugurated a $25 million program of rehabilitation and made it one of the finest railroads in the country. Its earnings increased 176%. In 1901, Harriman purchased the splendid far-flung Southern Pacific system, which, with his other lines, gave him the greatest railroad empire in the world. Suffering from an incurable malady, there were many times when he was unable to leave his bed. But in spite of pain and weakness, he continued to manage his business affairs with as much wisdom and energy as ever. We find him propped up in bed, giving orders to his secretary when his wife enters the room. And, uh, and be sure to get in touch with Jacob Sheaf about the C and A three percent bonds. And don't forget to call up. Now uh, there'll be no more business today. You're overtaxing your strength, dear. Uh, all right, Mary. Now that'll be all, Redmond. You can get in touch with me by phone if necessary. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Harriman. Mrs. Harriman. Good morning. Oh. Now, oh. you see, you're completely exhausted. Oh, Ned, Ned, I ought to give you a good scolding. Oh. Well, I guess I'm walking a pretty thin plank. Won't be long now before it breaks. If you'd only give up business altogether. Oh, no, as long as I can, I, I owe it to the thousands of people who have invested vast sums of money in my enterprises. To safeguard their interests. Mm -hmm. Always thinking of others. <laughs> it sounds funny. After all the things I've been called, heartless, greedy, selfish, an octopus, undesirable citizen, a malefactor of great wealth. Oh, that's because people don't know you as you really are. They forget all the unselfish things you've done. They forget how your 
Your railroads helped the stricken people of San Francisco at the time of the earthquake. Oh, oh, they don't figure that that cost me anything. Mm, and the millions you spent to save the Imperial Valley from being flooded by the Colorado River. Yes, and the boys' club in New York that you've supported all these years. Oh, yes. That reminds me. I, I want you to continue my donations to the club uh, after I'm gone. And I hold a mortgage on the club house. Of course, I, I never intended to foreclose, but... I wish you'd cancel the mortgage and present it to the trustees with my compliments. Why, of course, dear. And I, but... I've set aside 12,000 acres of this estate and, and wish to donate a million dollars for the purchase of other properties between here and the Hudson River to provide a recreation and health resort for the people of New York City. And please see that that's done. But, Ned, darling, wouldn't you like to do those things yourself when you're well again? Well, I... I'm not going to get well, Mary. Please, Mary. Oh, there's no use trying to deceive ourselves. My race is about to run. But it has all been very worthwhile. I'm proud of what I have accomplished, no matter what my enemies may say. If they are honest, they must admit that I've always been a builder, that my railroads have contributed immeasurably to the growth and prosperity of the country. And that if I have made millions for myself, I have also made countless millions for the people of America. On September 9th, 1909, on his beautiful estate near Tuxedo, New York, Harriman died. His passing brought to an end one of the most interesting, adventurous, and constructive careers in the annals of our country. His splendid railroad systems, giving the best in transportation service, are monuments to his genius, his ability, and his dynamic energy. Edward Henry Harriman, Captain of Industry. <laughs> <laughs>